Good morning. Will God's people ever return to him? Sometimes you wonder. But our reading today, Jeremiah chapter 50, verses 17 to 20, might help us. Israel is like scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First the king of Assyria devoured him. Now at last this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has broken his bones. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land as I have punished the king of Assyria, but I will bring back Israel to his home, and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan. His soul shall be satisfied on Mount Ephraim and Gilead. In those days and in that time, says the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought, but there shall be none, and the sins of Judah, but they shall not be found, for I will pardon those whom I preserve. People choose individually what they'll do. Some turn away from God and never come back. And you know, God is actively working. Many are going to return. We don't see them just bursting through the doors right now in mass, but they're coming. Now look what we have in today's reading. God's people have been scattered. They've gone into captivity. That's what we have today. They've gone into captivity in Babylon, into Assyria before that. And the interesting thing here is that those weren't bad signs. Those were not bad things. That was not that, you know, God was done with these people. In fact, that showed that he was chase he was chastening them. That showed that he had his eye on them, that he loved them, and he loved them too much to let them go. He's going to discipline them a bit and try to bring them along and bring them back. That's a sign of his affection and his attention. You see, it's from his love that he chastens them. Now, in the end, many of God's people will return. Now, here's a question. What will their spiritual condition be? And Jeremiah tells us. Notice verse 20 again. In those days and in that time, says the Lord. So there's a time coming, a very particular time. And what will we find? The iniquity of Israel won't be found. You'll look for it. You won't be able to find it. God's people will be pardoned. And he says, I'm going to pardon those that I preserve. And God's pardon will be so fully embraced by his people that they'll not only be forgiven for their sin, but they'll also be cleansed. Do you remember what 1 John 1, 9 says? If we confess our sins... He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there you have both pieces together, forgiving and cleansing. No one will be able to find them. As his people will be receiving his help and power, we won't be sinning. We won't be in rebellion, but we'll be copying his character. The image of our father will be seen in us, his children. God preserves his people. And, you know, here is the truth. All his biddings, all of God's biddings to us are enablings. When he asks us to do something, he provides the power and the help so that we can do it. It's a beautiful plan and it works wonderfully because we don't have to provide the power. All we need to do is say, yes, Lord, please. And then we need to set our will on his side. He will put his power behind our very feeble will and we'll be doing his things. It's a wonderful plan Every command that he gives us is actually a promise of his power to help us do what he commands. And so, wow, with, with a helper like that, how can we go wrong? I mean, his goodness isn't just within our reach as, you know, maybe an option. It's, it's practically a, a inevitability if we'll just reach out and be connected with him. He'll give us all that we need. And verse 20 has this beautiful promise for us. If you search for the sins of God's people at the very end of time, we'll see that there aren't any. God has forgiven them and empowered them, and these people are walking with him day by day. That's, that's who we want to be. We want that to be us. So just remember, it's not our goodness. We don't have any. It's his goodness, his goodness flowing out through us, oozing out into the world through his servants. That's what, that's what the world needs to see. What about Babylon? Well, Babylon doesn't have any goodness. Babylon's never been teamed up with God. Babylon's always been the, the picture of rebellion against him. So they don't have anything to give the world except trouble. Hey, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, what a beautiful truth that whoever you pardon, you preserve. We ask, Lord, that this will be true for us. As you pardon us, also, Lord, give us your help and power and preserve us so that we may do your will. Oh, Lord, thank you for your watch care over us. Thank you for chastening your people. Thank you for even delivering into captivity. Only bring us back, Lord. Help us to seek you and find you while you may be found. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Yes, many will return. It's not about ethnicity, it's about hearts. Will you give your heart to him all over again today? That's what I'm doing this morning. I hope you will too. God be with you this day.